Broadcasting presents Water Sports World. Clips of various water sports are shown, including windsurfing, yachting, power boating, jet skiing, surfing, water skiing, kiteboarding, canoeing, and whitewater rafting. Welcome to this week's show. Coming up, we've got an adventure of epic proportions as we head to Pakistan and the Himalaya Mountains, where a group of kayakers will try to tackle the River Indus. Then we return to Auckland, New Zealand, for our second report from the Louis Vuitton Pacific Series, where the world's best match racers are trying to qualify for the quarterfinals. And later in the show, we'll be heading to North Africa for our final look at the final round of the KPWT Kitesurf World Tour in Morocco. All that to come, starting with an amazing kayaking adventure from the Himalayas. Russell Fisher reports. Violent waves on a river crash against each other. A man stands on a high rock overlooking the rippling water below. Three kayakers make their way down a calm river between mountains. Other kayakers and their equipment. A local man and a boy wash clothes in the river. Yes, it's been my plan for many, many years to paddle the Indus River. On a globe, Pakistan is framed to show its location. A very good friend of mine went mountaineering in Manga Prabat last year in 2006. On his way back, he drove along the Indus all the time, and he told me it looked absolutely amazing. He said it's great wild water and that Pakistan is a fantastic country for traveling. After we returned, I visited Olaf immediately. I said, Olaf, we definitely have to go to Pakistan. We have to go to the Indus. It's a huge river and we've just got to ride it. And then we both looked for information. We asked around and that's where we heard of the Rondas Gorge. A violent river crashes around rocks. Until now, no one's managed to paddle the Rondas Gorge completely. The first descent with a kayak was by Richard Bangs in 1979. Obviously, he paddled parts of it. A bird's eye view of the river in a horseshoe shape. I was especially interested in the Indus, as it's the third biggest river of Asia. It collects the waters on the west side of the Himalaya, and it's a huge river. It's always been a holy river for the Indians, and it has a very special meaning for the Pakistanis. Two local men paddle on a homemade raft of tires and sticks. They make their way across a wide river. The river snakes between dry, hot landscape and mountains. The locals call the Indus River the Lion River because it's so dangerous and powerful, especially in summertime when the water level rises so much. Then many people are killed by the sheer volume of water. The motto of our expedition is Taming the Lion, which means that we want to tame the Lion River. We want to be the first to completely ride through the Rondu Gorge. The two kayakers sit on the riverbank discussing and pointing. The water is fast and violent. For me, the fascination of this expedition is to travel in an Islamic country. You need a special visa to come here. You have to get permission from the government to do what we want to do here. And then, of course, there's the landscape, which is just so impressive. Here in Pakistan alone, there's five mountains over 8,000 meters, and even more. There are nearly 100 mountains of over 7,000 meters. That's the backdrop for the Indus, where it works its way down to the Indian Ocean. And then we have this deep ravine. For us paddlers, it's really a crazy feeling to ride into a canyon, and in addition, it's an athletic challenge to do a first descent for sure. The two men carry their kayaks down to the river, then set off. A 
A camera on one of their helmets shows footage of their run down the river. They're thrown from side to side amongst the waves, but stay in control. Next, four men carry kayaks, a long, flat landscape beside a winding river. Everything here is like in a dream. The mountains are so gigantic. It's a huge river valley and I'm very excited to put our boats on the Indus for the first time. I'm very pleased that we can now drop into the river and I'm really excited to see the Rondo Gorge. They set off down the river using their oars to guide them and push themselves forward. Helmet camera footage shows the water splash up and over one of the kayaks. One kayaker paddles past and drops into a section of quick moving water, using his oars to maneuver. He moves quickly past large rocks. He then climbs onto one of the rocks. The others make their way down the river. One man hangs up equipment to dry and all four sit together as the sun sets. Ja, wir sind gestern am Skado Becken eingestiegen und Yes, we started at the Skardu Basin yesterday and I have to admit that we've been quite wrong with our expectations about the water volume. The volumes are just gigantic. We rode so many cataracts, you wouldn't find anything like it in Europe. The four men set off again carrying their kayaks. They stand on the banks watching the active river. It's our second day on the Indus now. Huge rapids are waiting for us directly at the drop in here. We had underestimated the water volume before we came here. Everything is much more massive than we thought. Sometimes we feel like a match in a toilet flush. A kayaker turns over in the water and struggles to get upright again. Once he does, he carries on down the river. In wild water sports, you distinguish between six different classes of white water. It begins with class one, that means very easy. It could be a light current or no current or some small waves perhaps. Then we moved on to two, three, four, where the level of difficulty is rising continuously. And class five, well class five is already something like a magic frontier. Finally, there's class six in wild water. And its definition goes like this. Well, actually, you can't ride it. You can only perhaps ride it at the risk of your life. Apart from that, you only distinguish between the kind of white water. Some sections may be technically very difficult, but there may not be a great volume of water to deal with, just the obstacles themselves. Or it may be the other extreme, when the volume of water itself and the violence of it are the problem. If it's forceful water, like mainly here in Pakistan, the difficulty is to get out of the way of the really big rollers. You have to be extremely safe when you sit in the boat. And the Eskimo roll has to work every time. It's very, very dangerous if you have to swim in rivers like this. Helmet camera footage shows a kayaker making his way down the violent river as waves crash around him. So it's the 
team complete their second day of this adventure, we're going to leave it for there, but we'll be back with them next week for more Himalayas. Still to come after the break, though, we continue our look at the Louis Vuitton Pacific Series in New Zealand, and we'll head back to Morocco for more kite-surfing action. End of part one.